Well, you know, I, I think what's interesting is when you start looking at speakers or looking at different factors, like just starting now, I'm going to start looking at the F10. I want to know how it starts to roll off because it's not uh, useless, right? The F10, right. like where, no, like how that plays yeah. with the room. If you consider that the Harman curve typically is about 9.2 dB up below 80 hertz, right? That, so you take a, a speaker, okay. you put it in a room, the typical gain below 80 hertz is around like nine decibels up. So mm -hmm. around nine to 10 decibels down, that means that you can still hear that. And yeah. so if you have a speaker that can play at 20 hertz, you know, F10, so minus 10 dB at 20 hertz, that means you'll hear that, mm -hmm. right? I, it's perceptible, but it's, of course, it's not going to be equal to a speaker that's can actually play down to 20 hertz. And then with room gain, now it's at plus nine or 10 or whatever it is. Um, my whole point is just that I think for that particular speaker, you know, somebody could um, use it without a sub and still at least hear some of those deep bass notes. They're not going to feel it. It's not going to be the same, right, but at yeah. least you can hear them. So yeah. putting things in perspective. Yeah. Uh, what else? It a was that. And then always the misspell Harmon. I keep seeing it. It's Harmon with an, a two a. A's, you numbskulls. <laughs> The, the other one was making a joke, I think. The the other one was uh I don't know Angie how Harman? important uh the directivity index is when you're planning to apply EQ. And right. so I think you touched on that a lot on this most recent review, yeah. in that you're like, you know what, Th these are you can EQ these. Whereas yeah. before I'm I might not have well, we didn't have that much access to that, right? Right, right. But nowadays I, I, I look at that like, okay, is that a speaker you can EQ? Yeah, you know. So I think that's important, especially when you're talking about like budget speakers, you know, because there are some budget speakers that can be EQ or take well to EQ and then some just don't, you know, yeah. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So real quick, I, I wanted to know your opinions. What do you think about um, how important is the F10 to you, Aaron? Well, I'll put it this way. If I didn't think it was important, I wouldn't put it on my graphic because other people have said, oh, you need to be putting F6. And I'm like, no, I don't mm -hmm. care about F6 when I already have F3. I want to know what the rate of the fall off is between F3 and F10. So that's why I put F10 on there. I so, think you had a guy on, on your channel that, you know, you had an interview with some, some older gentleman who talked about, you know, that F10 was pretty important. You remember who that was? Was that Gettys? No, nah, it was a uh, Dr. Tool. Was it him? Okay. Yeah. I had to check I it off remember. the list. I, I was uh, talking to some other folks in, uh, uh, in the discord the group. Right. Yeah. And, uh, I'm like, hey, so what do you guys think of F10? And they're like, well, you know, Dr. Tool seems to think it's important. And then they link to your video. I'm like, oh, oh that's pretty funny. I actually forgot. That's I was going to argue thing, with man. you about it. And then I'm like, well. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to argue with you about it. But as soon as I did a little research, I realized, oh, no. I yeah. have... No, I think F10 is much more important than just looking at F6. I see people using F6 and I'm like, I don't care. You need to know what the rate is, right? I don't care what the 6 dB down point is by itself. Mm -hmm. I want to know where the corner is at F3, and then I want to know how much it's falling off 10 dB. Like, how broad is that gap? You know, is it 80 hertz to 20 hertz? Because that's a really slow fall, fall off rate. That might be perfectly okay in a room, you know, without a subwoofer. But if it's 80 hertz to 60 hertz, well, you're not getting any kick out of that out of that base. So, yeah, you, yeah, you definitely want to sub. I think that's yeah. important. And it's uh, funny, I, too, because that's a perfect example, too, of things that I was doing a year or two ago that I don't even think about anymore because, you know, like I, sometimes you get fixated on certain aspects and then you come back around. So now I'll be paying attention to F10 again yeah. for two months and then I'll kind of forget about it again, you know. Well, but that's the good thing about it's It's always been in there in the data. So if I want to go back and compare it against anything, I've got it from something else. Like, I think lately, because of the type of speakers you've been reviewing, this is just my my uh you know what i've yeah no noticed sure. right because they're so good so linear that when you see something that's normal yeah. it's almost like oh right yeah, you're, no, you're, you've got these dsp ones and then if you, you zoom out a little bit and you compare let's say <laughs> that um that uh, encore b6 right which compared to the other ones that you've recently reviewed looks pretty looks pretty terrible. wild right compared to but yeah, right you compare it to some other ones you're like oh okay yeah you know, well that's kind of why i made speakers. the comment about you know, I, I was mentioning comparing it to the Kef, and I was like, but the Kef is like 9000 bucks a pair. You can buy 10 of these Encores and still have money left over. 
I mean, yeah. 10 full sets of the encores, you know? So yeah, it's, it's all relative, but I, I totally agree with you that it's easy to get spoiled. And then when you come back to a speaker and you like, listen to it again, cause I remember I listened to the B6 when I did the initial review back in December and I was like, you know, it's pretty much the same comments, but I think I was more positive on it. And then when mm-hmm. I went back and listened to it again after the calf, I was like, eh. <laughs> like I'm not feeling yeah, it yeah. as much anymore. So it <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's pretty uh, tough to go right after those $9,000 yeah. calves. Right. It, it, to me, it's just, it came down to the base, right? Like, if you're gonna spend yeah. under four hundred bucks, good base. You know, you, you probably don't have all kinds of DSP. You just if you can have a little base, then I think you're gonna be pretty happy. Anyway, I actually like the uh, since we're talking about that, I like the bookshelf more than I like the tower, and I don't know why. Well, I'm not sure. Well, they, they have why. a little more uh, boosted treble, right? The, the towers had more boosted treble to try to. Was that what it was? Okay, I, like my, my I remember when I when I looked at it because Maybe. they have the three woofers. Right? Yeah, they had to try to like boost up the treble a little yeah, bit to kind of okay. match that, yeah. and it wasn't as flat. It's just brighter. So maybe they went yeah. a little w- too wild on that. Maybe. Um, but yeah, I agree. I was more impressed with the bookshelf, but yeah, that center. When I looked at the data for the center, because I just briefly listened to the center, and I sat mm-hmm. off to the side, and I was like, "That's not too bad." But I was like, "Let's." I'm curious what the data is going to show me now. And yeah. I looked at the data. I was like, "Wow, this center actually looks pretty dang good." Like compared to, especially compared to other centers that are similar in design. Mm-hmm. You know, it has a it has a much better dispersion, so you can actually sit off axis and be completely okay. Well, within I, reason. I did but, ask you about that though, right? I remember one time I'm like, "So because like I'm like this one seems pretty consistent." Yeah. And then I'm like, "You're like, well, if it's a uh, you know, the wave yeah, pretty big, it. so it might be worse." Yeah, I bucketed like, it. I don't know. I was like, nah, I don't think so. But sure enough, man, I was like, it's pretty good. But then once you get past 30 degrees and it falls off, but I'm like, nobody's sitting past 30 degrees off to the side of that speaker. You yeah. know, not unless sealed. you're like sitting two feet away from it. That one's a sealed one too. I think you like sealed, yeah. sealed. And a, and of course a Dan Romer design. So yeah, not, not yeah, too bad. Good design. Um,